This is Apostle Senator, and this is my wife, Prophet Valencia Hines. Greetings. Anybody want to press a little further? Somebody oh, lift your voice the to the Lord. They're normal. God, They're normal because you're really finding out what drew me to this relationship and what made me come to the point that I want to vow to be in covenant with this person for the rest of my life. Come on, we're about to get out of your way, but we want to press a little further. Amen. It's quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. If I, it's able to discern immediately after you receive it, the word already knows if you reject it or not. The word already realizes, amen, you ate it, you ate something, your body rejected immediately. The word I love my children. I have to remember sometimes that they're grown. You can't get grown folks on whooping. I know you want to. Sometimes we have stuff we don't agree with. And I be saying, look, girl. Because sometimes I be the girl. And she thinks she got a little fool, you know. I didn't want to go at them wrong, but I forget it, man. She almost 30 years old. <laughs> yeah, baby. Two years. A year and a half. Less than a year and a half to be 30. Amen. <laughs> and so, if the relationship, watch this now. If the relationship is not in proper perspective, it'll be out of order. It'll be an imbalance. It'll be messed up. And when it's not in proper perspective, you do more harm than good. Y'all hear me? It's just like when me and Corey have an encounter. I told you the little incident where I gave him a little jab. If it was in proper perspective, you know, and he and he responded like I was in the world instead of his dad, we would have had some problems. Y'all see how big my son is? I know I ain't stronger than him. So I had to do what I needed to do to protect myself, but you know. But since it's in proper perspective, you know, yeah, what's up? I see. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I hit you, man. I'm sorry I was lying. But you told me you weren't lying to me. But the proper perspective, okay, I put things back in proper perspective. I apologize for what I did. Some of y'all parents will apologize to you because you the parent. And so now we can live in the same house. We can coexist. You have to stay in these space. I stay in my space sometimes, but we coexist. And we keep things in perspective. We eliminate distractions. That get within the parent and you know, children relationship. We don't let things compete with that. Are y'all following me? Yeah. I can have as many spiritual daughters that God has sent me, but they don't take the place of kill woman. Huh? She's not. She's not intimidated by folks calling me dad. Matter of fact, she watches folks like that. That little real daughter right there. She looking at you. Oh, she tell it. I said, you serious? She's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, baby, I got it. Thank you for watching with this. Y'all still with me? Eliminate distraction. First John. I'm all, I got a little time. First John 2.15. Am I doing all right this morning? Anybody got some distractions? 
I want the one that don't have no distractions. I'm gonna, we're going to put you on display. I ain't got no distractions. I'm just all sold out to the Lord. <laughs> I love the Lord with all my heart, man. So not, yeah, you do, but you got distractions. You hear from God, you know the voice of God, man. You got a prayer life, you know the word, but you still have distractions. Blind folk down. Don't have no distractions. Speed is a distraction. I know here, the majority of this church is speed. We're going to break that spirit for this year without saying. The majority of this church, I was, come on. Even the quiet folks see. Because they following somebody else from the church. So they they done developed a habit. Okay, y'all think I'm lying? Wait till church over with. When they watch out, people start leaving out. Even though I'm saying this, they might not do it today, but people start leaving out the parking lot. As soon as they hear the little turn, you don't pull off with your car making noise on, on dry concrete. Parking lot guys be like this running when the car's coming in. That's a spirit. First John two fifteen. I like to make y'all laugh, man. Just set y'all up. First John two fifteen. It says what? Love not. Love not. Everybody say love not. Love not. The world. Neither the things that are in the world. Now, which verse does say? If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That means I don't. Want, I don't desire things in the world. But I don't have such a passion for it that it takes the place of God. I want not even say I don't like nice stuff. I like to dress nice, ride nice, I like all that stuff. But it don't have me. You still with me? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father. So when these things are priority to you, when they distract you from God, it is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world passes away. And the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So I'm going to stay with God. I'm going to eliminate all distractions. I'm going to eliminate all competition from him. Are y'all still with me? I know I can't serve two masters, so God got to be first in my life. Him being first puts everything into perspective. Are you hearing me? When I find myself with things out of perspective, I don't wait on nobody to tell me to get right. Come on, y'all. Everybody know when they miss it. Everybody know when they miss it. A lot of us can't pursue God because we're going out for popularity. We want people to see us like we up here. <laughs> we don't want nobody to see us in our weakness. Don't you know sometimes when you miss it, when everything gets out of order, these first three things are messed up, and you're trying to fix it, it takes us to the last thing. Repent and return. Number four, repent and return. When I find myself straight, I repent. And sometimes repentance makes me look weak. Nonetheless, when this is done, man, you can wish you had repent. I got a whole lot for just a little time, just to get short on time. When I'm repenting, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, the Bible says, God is sorrow, work of repentance. Not, I'm repenting because I got caught. Somebody saw me doing wrong, but God see me. If I can have one concept, God is omnipresent. That means that the eyes of the Lord are in all places, beholding or looking on the evil and the good. He see what I'm doing. And because I, watch this. And this is what we got, I was talking about earlier in the leadership training. Condemnation don't come from God. We condemn ourselves. Even after many of us find ourselves short and we repent, we still condemn ourselves. We condemn ourselves because, what, number one, Many times, we know we're not finished yet. Amen. What do you mean finished yet? You know you're going to do it again. 
possible to understand. You know, he, he talks about a relationship because him and his wife got a good relationship. And then, and then, and then but <laughs> you put things in proper perspective. Anything God has done for somebody you admire, he can do for you and even greater. Is serving the Lord hard? It's for the people that make it hard. You've heard many testimonies in this church about people having things out of respect, confessing the word and making all these confessions and not living it with their saying and the results are not happening on their lives. And I keep telling you, I wouldn't be a part of a church. I wouldn't be part of a, of a I would connect to people that talk, talk something that they don't live. <laughs> Some folks shaking their head. How you say that? If, if, okay, I'm on y'all side now. If the man up there is preaching something, or that woman preach something that I can't see them live, I wouldn't be connected to them. Come on. I'm bold enough to say that. If I can't see it on their life, I wouldn't be there. Because I've seen, i I've been around people since I've been saved 20 plus years. I've been around some preachers, man, that took a preach. They, I mean, they tear it up. They break it down for you, bro. You can understand they have on the screens and everything. But when those people leave out the house, out the church, out the pulpit, it's a totally different life. And it looks good on the outside, but when they get home, they don't talk to their spouse. Their children don't even like to deal with them. Why? Because they don't have a passion really for the things of God. They have a passion for popularity. They want to be accepted by men. Many of us, even in the church, will settle for being accepted by men. Why God is disappointed in us. In plain English, we would rather be a public success than a private thing. Don't you know what you do in private? That's the really thing that, that, that determines your health. Hear me, hear me clearly. Your private life determines how you, a lot to do with your health, health issues. You can continue to play songs. A lot of people, their blood pressure, take all this medication, all this, because their private life is different from what they present themselves. They don't have a peace because they're not in the process of, they're not developing a passion for the things of God. When you get hungry for God, man, it's reflected by the people that are closest to you. People start watching you. A lot of you don't even know that your motivation for the things of God, you have a nigga demons that's looking at you from afar. Somebody watching you. Like I've been watching you for the last four or five months, man. You still going, you still going to that church. And when they come around you, conversation changes. And it starts drawing people. That's part of your assignment. The danger is we can't get comfortable in what we're doing. When I find out that everything in my life is out of order, it doesn't matter who sees me or who don't see me as a powerful man of God or a powerful husband. It's, it's about getting back in a proper relationship with God. The Bible said the pleasure of the flesh, but for a moment. You mean that the stuff we do that we think we're having fun, it don't last a long time. It runs out, man. Come on. You can, there's going to be a point in time you ain't going to be able to get high enough, drunk enough. You ain't going to be able to sleep with enough people. All that stuff going to get old. There's still going to be a void in your life. And when you can't feel that void, the only thing you can feel that void is having God in his rightful place. It bothers me sometimes because I see what God has done for Valencia and me. And the people that have been around them, God has elevated them. But I've seen because there's such a determination to please God, that I just go out there and just do, do what he asked me to do. I had this said this week in the church, one of the leaders, and uh, well, it was a couple of weeks ago, some leaders had to, came to my office to talk about some things. And one of them I know, but all of them were God's called them to great. I just told them, you do what you think you want to do, but this is what, I'm, this is what I say about this. And I didn't give them a decision. I just left it on because I trust that amen. When they put stuff in proper respect, because I see the love that they have for God, the people that they have for God, God will humble.